might sound like a really strange question, Sean, yeah. but does it make you feel like more of a, a whole because you're doing all of these different things and you're fulfilling all of these things that you well, once always had in your head? I'll be honest with you. You know, a lot. Of, I don't mean to keep bringing up the morbid or, or anything, but I lost my dad about four and a half years ago, and I lost my mom recently. My father-in-law, who I'm really close to, who's kind of taken position of both of them, is jokingly, affectionately, lately tells me, hey, you're going to be 40, you're going to start reminiscing stuff, and you're going to be blasting to the past, and you're not going to know why. And my mom always said I was a renaissance guy, that I was never going to have my hand in just one thing, that I was going to do it all. And in my dream of being a professional musician, the album covers... And, I mean, my favorite album of all time is Fair Warning by Van Halen. Wow. And I believe either a Dutch or German artist painted the cover. And there's a guy holding the guy down with his knee, giving the guy a bloody nose. There's another guy walking into a wall. All oil. This is how I grew up. This is what I am. I take the photos. I paint the pictures. I write the songs. I play the songs. Blah, blah, blah. I'm a renaissance guy. I got my hand in everything, but it all is the same art. The video, the photography, the painting, it's all our culture. And I've given it up for 10 years gladly and respectfully, you know, to pursue the other. And now I've kind of mastered it, if you will. And now it's time to get busy. And I always told my mom and dad that by the time I was 40, I was going to have my art under wraps. And unfortunately, they're both gone and uh you know this is for them and this is to get off my butt and give people in this world my pain and share my vision my element and on top of it like frank said i'm a big fan of his stuff period end of story um i was a fan when i walked in and he was emotionally pain he could have just said go to hell to everyone because it's tense and he could give you some stories and it's under fire but he still gave the passion and that inspired me and then all of a sudden i, I go to this art show and it's him, you know, and I'm like, awesome, you know, and, you know, since then, uh, I've had to acquire pieces because I, I love the vision. I have to look at it every day and let it be a part of my day. And that's what we're trying to do here together. TJ on the end of owning a gallery. Uh, TJ and I go back when I used to own the Safari Club mm. where, uh, you know, I had to purchase that so <laughs> the almighty could get the, 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 the shows without being barred and we could do our <laughs> show without anybody telling us. But TJ just came in one day and was like, man, I want to make you some art and get you some art in here. And he was a, a person that came into shows all the time, paid to come into shows, enjoyed the punk rock, drank beer. I didn't pay a lot, though. I, you know, <laughs> stuck in the I, was, back a lot. I was actually trying to, you know, I was trying to make it like his name. <laughs> Sound legit anyway. Huh? <laughs> but he came in and, and honestly, our friendship started with, hey, man, what do you think about some art? And... Um, it, it ends up that I end up giving those sculptures that he made for that place. I end up giving those to my mom, and it's all it's all tied. It's all meant to be, mm -hmm. and um, and you know, so he's got the gallery and helps local people. Frank's uh, a part of you know whatever scene is here in town of people, and we're going to try and do this a lot more, and we're going to make it where it's not hard to get a bunch of different kind of mindsets together for the appreciation of exploring oneself. Of color, you know, and I can't express enough, man. It's just getting less and less art as the world goes. You know, you can see these kids today just tuned right into a cell phone, mm -hmm. and you could show them a number one video, and they'll download it, but they'll be like, "What's next?" I just watched the best things supposedly in the entire world. What's next? They're already done with yeah. the brilliant piece. It's all too easy for them nowadays. You know, I don't know what this has to do with anything, but it used to be you had to go to a library and find a book possibly to find the answer to something. And nowadays, any kid can just type on his thing. And it's all so easy. They, they're forgetting about the process or the, the wanting, the yearning, you know, the passion of life. It's all and, and that's, phony. And that's our show. They're going to come down and they're going to see Frank and they're going to go, wow, you know, you can, you can assemble wood together and you know, go nuts on it and do this. And then you'll look at one of my photography pieces and go, oh, you, you had it framed and matted. it. And, you know, that's what we're trying to do is just bring everybody together, have a good time. And, uh, you know, art, 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 whatever. Thursday night at the uh, Hotel Kirkwood. Now, real quick, Sean, tell me about the apocalyptic nightmare journey. 
Apocalyptic Nightmare basically is everything in my life. I'm inspired every day of my life on hell on earth. I'm convinced we live in hell. <laughs> and ever since I was a little kid, I always liked the darker artists who, who, would, who would have these religious undertones and these political undertones with parallel themes and metaphors and paintings. And people just look at it and go, oh, my God, this is disturbing. But really, back then, there was no Internet, no paper. And you had to have these political and religious views in paintings. So my stuff's like that. So everything under my art is under apocalyptic nightmare. I have a book coming out of my Polaroid work over 10 years. And I have pictures from like Hank Williams uh, Jr., the third, the official legitimate Hank the third, uh, you know, from people from bands like Devil Driver to Lamb of God to obviously Slipknot to people like Rick Rubin, whatever, you know. And I just put this little book together to share. And I've waited 10 years to do it, to be right. And it all came, you know, unfortunately, not to keep bringing it up, but, you know, when you lose your parents, man, uh, that's it, man. You, you, you got you to gotta take reality a little more serious. And I just, I've just been blowing off what it is I thought I've wanted to do my whole life. And what I want to do is make art, whether it's music or paint or photography. And I want to be around people that are like that. I don't want to be around people that don't, that don't have vision to accidentally change the world through color. You know? Well, we've been enjoying your vision of Slipknot over the past 10-plus years. Uh, you guys just recently uh, reissued the debut album and uh, did up the packaging real nice. So we've been enjoying that. Did you get that? that? Uh, Have you got that yet? Are you kidding? It? Of course. Cool. One of the first people in line to, to own What'd that. What do you think? I think it's pretty awesome, cool. man. Did you did you design that? Or? Yeah, you know, uh, just for what it's worth, we waited forever to do something like that. Um, we've never, we're an obvious band to do special art for. Um, it's really hard to sell CDs and things like that in today's world, which is really unfortunate. You'd yeah. think that it'd be awesome that some band of our caliber would give away a special package, you know, sell it. It's so hard to even sell that. So I wish it could have been 10 times even more. But the reality of the business is there's a, you know, a certain amount of what you can do. So I'm really pleased with it for what we could get done. And I just thought every kid in their world is going to put secret stuff in there, <laughs> you know, and it's their world. And I highly encourage that. And lock it away from your parents and start with our disc and then buy a piece of our art and fold it up and put it in there. And don't tell anyone and bury it. And maybe like Treasure Island, they'll... They'll dig it up in years to come, and you know our legacy, <laughs> our tombstones will be forever, whatever. This uh, exhibit on Thursday at the Hotel Kirkwood, absolutely free to get in, I understand. Yeah, it's free, and uh, but you know it's going to be, it's really going to be regulated. You know, there's, you know, it's it's a small place, and again, it's really bouncing off of art, and people need to realize that, and uh, you know, but it's free. It's from seven till midnight. And uh, like I said, my wife, Chantel, will be showing jewelry. I'll be showing some uh, um, paintings and Polaroid. Frank's going to be doing a wide array of paintings and stuff. Uh, another artist, Scott Caven, uh, paintings and multimedia and film. TJ and his lovely wife, Jackie, will be there with Moberg Gallery. And, you know, uh, they're, they're so, they have so many artists that they represent and people. So there'll be that whole thing. And then, again, Friday night is really Frank's show. And he's been nice enough to invite me to come in on that. But it's really his show. But uh, I'll be there, too, with my stuff. And I have some special stuff that's different from uh, the, the night before. But we're going to have a show on the 25th at Moberg, just Frank and I, and, uh, you know, with TJ and his wife. And a good weekend of, uh, you know, just reflecting, man, something that's well overdone, you know, well overdue for me. And I think anybody that knows me enough, um, they're pretty excited about finally having the opportunity to do this and i think we're going to do it once a year and uh you know maybe even you know put big music with it and really turn some stuff up in this town but that that's a story for another time good for you sean good for you simon anything to add back there buddy you want to say, you wanna say <laughs> anything no not so much he's just enjoying he, that i just picked him up from school he's very tired school just started a couple weeks ago cool he's trying to adjust to his sleeping schedule he's like what am i doing here <laughs> <laughs> Sean, Frank, TJ, thank you guys so much for your time. You hey, bet. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Thank you.